Hello everyone, welcome back to Navy Fodder. My name is Sachi and today we're back here after a few days and after a weekend with the World War mode going on and all that, we're back on Naval and yeah, it's been it's been a long time, let's say, not to play Naval for like a for like a week or so. It's uh, been super busy and all that, but anyway, we're back and I'm happy to bring you a guide on a very fine ship and this is the the Nuremberg. As I said a very fine ship which um, sadly I haven't had played that much because of its peculiarities that we will talk about along the video so you can also keep an eye and look for those little details that are gonna tell you that that particular game or in that particular moment it is a good moment to go ahead and spawn with the Nuremberg and you're gonna do fine because if you don't do so if you just try and play the Nuremberg no matter what you are not gonna have a fun time my friend the Nuremberg also is one of the reasons why I just started doing the uh, German naval tech tree because if you look into the 5.7 that contains the Nuremberg it does have one of the most iconic ships of the you know the german world war ii uh, ships and the 5.7 is very similar to the 5.0 lineup of the germans because you have one ship for every kind of situation so it's a um, very very effective lineup to play and a very fun one as well and with all that say i think that we can just jump in and check all the all those peculiarities of this uh, fine ship, the Nuremberg. If we talk about survivability in general terms, in, as always, uh, the first thing that we have to look at is the crew number. The crew number is 935 crew members, and it's just, I'm not going to say decent, it's, uh, it's fairly good for the light cruiser. Um, if you compare this with the other cruisers it's in a very good spot and yeah it's gonna it's gonna give you that extra staying power that you're gonna need because of what we are gonna be talking about in just one second and it is the armor layout the armor layout of the Nuremberg yeah you've guessed it right it's not the best it's just the light uh, cruiser so yeah it's not gonna be able to withstand massive uh, amounts of uh, of firepower so uh that's gonna that's gonna lead you into a certain gameplay which is kind of uh, new for the things that we have been discussing in the uh, in the channel but also kind of similar to for example the atlanta if we look into the armor we're gonna start from the top to the bottom side so as always a very thin superstructure so it's eight millimeters so anything around here is eight millimeters then uh, the one thing to note is that you have an armored bridge of 100 millimeters that is going to protect your bridge from like medium uh, medium to long ranges against, for example, destroyers. Anything like a cruiser or a heavy cruiser is going to be able to penetrate it. And it's going to happen every now and then because people are going to try and, and knock out your turrets and the bridge is too close to the front turret so if we talk about the turrets um yeah i mean they are only lightly armored and they're only gonna withstand um calibers of like uh, four inches or five inches nothing made than that any light cruiser or any heavy cruiser with like semi armor piercing or ap of course uh, is gonna be able to penetrate it the good thing is that inside the ammo elevator or inside the turret there is no ready to use ammo in there for them to detonate if they want to if they want to reach to that um to that ammo they need to aim for the magazines the thing is if they hit a turret there's a chance of fire and as you know the ammo elevators can let's say lead that fire into the magazines underneath another thing to mention about the turrets is that you have three of them and each one of them has three guns so every time you so every time you effectively knocked out one of the turrets you are taking off one third of the total firepower of the Nuremberg which is a big thing so try not to you know lose them but I mean that depends on the enemy team isn't it <laughs> so yeah um, and 
then if we look into the lower bits, well, let me just say that before we get onto that, uh, that you, as you can see, you have no protection whatsoever around the hole, around the top part of the hole and the hole is only 25 millimeters so you have uh, i mean very exposed um, compartments crew compartments so yeah the thanks god you've got a, a high crew count because the compartments are not very well protected you have one big massive crew compartment here and then another three along this line here so yeah and then if we look into the internals you have uh, you have them protected but by what it's called the turtle back layout it is just kind of a double layer and then the inner one is kind of a uh, curved as the shell of a turtle so if we take the outer belt which is 50 millimeter if we take that one out you can see the turtle back if we zoom in a little bit you can see here the turtle back layout which ends just around the engines and then we have a kind of sloped little 20 millimeter belt and then another one of 15 millimeter here so yeah what about this turtle back layout it is very efficient it is it really is it's really good so it's gonna stop pretty much anything hitting you like six inch guns from like long ranges up to like you know nine kilometers and up once you go lower than that it's gonna start showing that it's not very you know thick <laughs> good thing it's also sloped so that's gonna help as well so yeah turtle back it works the thing is as you can see it sits very very low so it covers like a little bit underneath the waterline and just a little bit right above it. And that means that the layer of armor that is going to be stopping most of the incoming fire, I would say not most, but maybe 50-50, let's say, apart from the belt of 50 millimeter, is going to be the deck armor. And your deck armor is only 20 millimeters, which is going to be enough to withstand 5-inch guns and just that <laughs> because six inch guns uh, semi armor piercing are, are gonna melt you as well so plunging fire it's a problem for the Nuremberg and as I'm saying all this whatever applies to the Nuremberg applies as well for the Leipzig because they are sister ships and their layout is almost identical so yeah two ships for the price of one guys <laughs> 20 millimeters of deck armor Anything hitting right above the waterline has very, very high chances of penetration. And I'm and I mean like five inch guns as well. Even at kind of medium ranges, like you know, nine kilometers, things like that, they have a chance to penetrate you in certain places because once you get past this uh, deck armor of 20 millimeters, for example, here, as you can see, there's a little triangle here that is going to be double up with this 15 millimeter uh, belt. And for the back part of the magazines, you're going to have 20 millimeter. So this very front in here, do you have a little bit of ammunition there? And that if you hit around here, it's only protected by 20 millimeters of armor if you hit a little bit here it's gonna have to go through this layer plus this layer and then maybe around this one but there are little places where as you can see the armor is not huge i mean it's just the deck armor and those are the places where every now and then you're gonna get blown up because a random shell has just, you know, gone through that little bit. So that's a problem. Um, the good thing is that, as you, as you know, there's compartments, crew compartments around here. And there's a bit of armor around here as well. And those are going to, you know, further improve your armor a little bit. But you cannot count on that because uh, it's not much armor. And yeah, anything being six inch uh, shells are going to have enough penetration to go through those compartments and keep on going. And I'm not even talking about AP. AP is just going to go through you. And anything like eight inch guns with semi armor piercing are just going to melt the number. It's just very simple. <laughs> Let's just talk about the bright side of the Nuremberg, and yes, it is the gunnery. 
McGonaghy is why we play the Nuremberg, and it's just exactly the same as with any other German uh, ships. It's uh, it does have the flat trajectory that we all love, and what makes the Nuremberg unique is its fire rate, the fire rate of its guns. And you might say, well, these are not unique because the Leipzig, the Köln, and the Karlsruhe have the same guns. But yeah, let me tell you that you need to double check that because in all those three ships, the uh, fire rate is eight rounds per minute and on the Nürnberg is 12 rounds per minute, which is significantly better. And it's uh, it's normal that this happens is because it's not very well laid out. It can pass unnoticed very easily because in the main card that normally people you know sees before he acquires or start investing his time his research points on a certain vehicle it doesn't say the reload rate of the main turrets it just doesn't say so you need to be specifically looking for the differences between these uh, ships or you're not gonna you know discover that and sadly that is something that not many people do you normally tend to just you know look at the car and then that's it okay that's some but what else i mean 120 shells per gun and that is not much so that means that you need to be disciplined with your gunnery if not you're gonna run out of shells but more on that later three turrets triple uh, gun turrets so every time, as we said before, every time you lose one, you lose one third of your firepower. The layout is one on the front and two at the back, which is, some people might say it's kind of weird, but if you uh, go into the history of Germany and at how were they designing their ships between the wars, you might understand why they went for this layout and not for a more traditional one. But that's another story. Moving forward, we have the ammo selection for the main battery and it is fairly decent. We have a very good selection of ammo, let me just say, and we have one of each kind of ammo. And thanks to that, we're going to be able to kind of choose between two different game styles, but we will talk about that at the end of the video. So let's start with the HE shell and this one is a nearly 4 kilo of TNT filler so it's a very decent HE shell it does have 37 millimeters of pen which will help this shell to get inside some you know lightly armored compartments as well and to degrade you know pieces of armor but then uh, I mean this shell is the one that I use for everything you know to start fires to knock out superficial and less armored uh, turrets things like that this will also melt you know destroyers in a few salvos and will help me deal some damage to highly armored uh, targets that i might encounter in the way i tend to store less than one third of the total amount of ammo in my loadout i try to always start every single engagement with this shell and once i've found the range and i'm hitting the target consistently i will change to the next shell type which is the same ammo piercing this shell does have 3.5 32 kilograms of TNT on it which is fairly decent and the penetration is not the best but it's not horribly bad either so it's workable and this is what is going to allow you to get you know to the ammo rats of the destroyers and on some lightly armored cruisers as well with other cruisers with heavy cruisers for example or cruisers that have um, their bits well protected You'd be better off trying to get the crew or switching to AP to get to the magazine. And this shell has one kilo and a half of TNT equivalent and it does have fairly decent penetration on it. I personally only load 90 shells of this because that's what I need, only 10 salvos and sometimes it lasts me for a couple engagements because as i said before when i change to this shell is because i'm on target because i know where i'm going to shoot and i know that i'm going to hit let me tell you right here that the other gameplay that is out there that you can do with the Nuremberg is one based on just carrying the ap shell and just you know just it was called i believe it was called the um, the ap monster so, so you just throw AP to everything and it, I wouldn't recommend this nowadays because of mainly three reasons but we will talk about that later on 
and the last shell option is the time fuse shell which is there but I don't even load it because I rather using the other three ones but mainly because of three reasons one is the low ammo count that we have at our disposal second because the AA coverage is fairly good without having to use the main battery guns and if you're not convinced yet let me tell you that the maximum angle at that you can fire with your main battery is only 40 degrees historically it went up to 50 degrees i believe but maybe gaijin has just cut it to kind of you know nerf the number in that way the rotation speed is decent and the firing angles are very good. Another good feature of the Numberg and one that is going to facilitate you to take decisions and once you get into, you know, close quarter encounters is that the back turrets can rotate 360 degrees. And as I said, this is going to be really good when you have to switch targets from one side to another and you have to do that quickly the secondary armament are eight 3.5 inch guns and these are these are good i mean these are and four turrets with double guns and they are just you know they are adequate they are they're gonna do their job let's say i wouldn't bother using this for surface targets because the he is very anemic it doesn't even have one kilo of tnt equivalent especially with the reload rate of your main battery i think that using these guns as well as the main battery is just distracting so i tend to leave these ones focused only on the anti-air duty but as always switching to the ground and anti-air when we are getting close to the islands to where the pity boats are spawn and all that just to you know to alert us of proximity of enemies in case that we are zooming in we are already engaged with somebody else so just keep a little bit of he there for your secondaries just in case you want to engage you know pity boats and all that but for that, uh, I think you are very well covered with the with the small caliber guns. The small caliber guns are all over the place. And you do have some uh, bow force uh, guns, which are amazing. The reload rate is, yeah, really good. And the typical 20 millimeter uh, German guns. And they are scattered all around the place, as I said, but mainly concentrated amidships and at the back. The front is a little bit lacking in coverage, let's say. So every time an aircraft tries to approach you, try and give, you know, a little bit of the side to the aircraft so you can get as many guns targeting the aircraft as possible. This also applies and works against PT boats. Okay, guys, so that was the raw data, let's say. And now we're just going to dive into my personal experience with the with the Nuremberg. So if you put this ship into context, you have to see whatever you have available and whatever is normally out there in the bracket that this ship plays which is the 5.7 bracket what's available to us to us it's available a grass spare and a 8 inch heavy cruiser and then we have the light cruisers so we have one of every kind that you could get access at this kind of uh, tier and that makes this lineup very 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 versatile excuse me did i say very versatile and it is because every single ship in this lineup has a strong point and a very marked play style and that is why we tend to go into the escort like cruiser escort role with it because if you want to go for the damage monster at 5.7 you've got ships that do that role better and more consistently thanks to the better armor so why don't we just use the Nuremberg as it was intended as an anti-air and as an escort ship one that was meant to go along with others and i say this because the number really shines when you play this ship in a squad and also because there's another way let's say to play the number which is as the ap monster <laughs> but uh, i wouldn't recommend that just because 
uh, if you just load AP on your Numberg and try to, you know, play to the advantage of the fire rate, you are gonna consistently find yourself in every single game with the same problem. And it is that you run out of ammo. As simple as that. You have to be a disciplined gunner and spamming AP with the Numberg while you have other ships at the 5.7 of the German Tech Tree that can do that better. I mean, that have better AP shells. It's just not the way to go. It's a rather poor option. It, but it's one that it's there. With this, I want to say that you should try it if you want because it's fun for like a couple of games and then you realize that it's not working. Mainly because the AP shell, its uh, penetration is nothing to write home about and the TNT filler is that of a 6 inch uh, shell. So it's like 1 kilo and a half. Again, nothing to write home about. It's the fact of the fire rate, the thing that it's enabling you to this kind of playstyle, but then again, you have a low ammo count compared to your fire rate. Also, there's the ecosystem that it's in place nowadays is very different to the one that was, you know, a couple years back in time. And with this, I want to mention that, you know, there's more like Helena's out there. There's more 8 inch ships out there. There's more even bigger guns out with inclusion of the HMS Glorious with the Graf Spare and all that. And if we put all this together, and the first conclusion that we can come out with is that the Nuremberg is not a very strong first spawn. This just follows a simple logic that depends on where does your team spawns in relation to the enemy and on the special armor layout of the Nuremberg. I explained this also on the Atlanta guide and I do show which maps are safer for you to spawn in with the Atlanta which do kind of correlate very well with the Nuremberg as their ammo layouts behave kind of in a similar way in their respective brackets even when they are very different and before we tackle the last bit of this video I want to explain how you can be a disciplined gunner and you have to because you have only 120 rounds per gun and those fly because of your fire rate and if you're not disciplined you're gonna find yourself in situations where you are just gonna run out of the semi ammo piercing or you're just gonna be left with HE or just with AP and you just need exactly the opposite kind of shell so in order to avoid that I suggest that you load kind of two thirds, nearly two thirds of semi ammo piercing and then the last just over one third of remaining ammo that you divide that between the HE and the AP but favor the HE and then try to always start an engagement with HE. Shoot HE and when you are consistently hitting when you know that you can predict the next salvo, just change to semi ammo piercing or to AP. Try to avoid very long range engagements because even though your flat trajectory is good for those kind of engagements, you can't not sustain them for a long time. Remember always to switch back to HE whenever you finish an engagement. And now I'm just gonna say that I know that we are all pros here and that we don't need this kind of, of advice because you know we are pros but when you run out of ammo with Numberg, remember me remember this video come back here and listen to this and try it and i'm saying this because it does sound very you know very easy that's something that you know you or maybe something that you don't need to do but you really do <laughs> And I know it because I've played a lot of these, you know, very high fire rate ships with low ammo count and I've run out of ammo loads of times. And the only way that I have been able to not to has been by becoming a disciplined gunner, by following these kind of rules. And also 
don't stress with something like this because it's really difficult to do it to perfection. I mean, I don't think anybody can do this to perfection, but it's something that is just meant to help you to save some ammo during the games. The objective is not to do, not to just, you know, have this discipline, take this to perfection. That is just not real. You just need to save ammo. That's what you need to do. And by doing so, by doing this, you will find that you will be improving on that respect. And you could also use this for all the ships as well. And it is something that at the beginning, it's kind of hard to do it well. But with time and with practice, you will become a master. And finally, let's talk about how the hell should you play the Nuremberg, in my honest opinion. So that is as a escort ship. And that means playing along others. It could be with your own squadron or maybe just choosing a team player that has, a, let's say, a bigger and especially the best ships to escort are the ones with a slower fire rate because you both are going to compensate each other weak spots better. And if you don't have any squadron members to play with or if you just can be asked about escorting anyone on your team or maybe there's no one to escort around you the way to play the Nuremberg is as a flotilla leader and I have already explained that on a previous video if I recall correctly again on the Atlanta video so if you want to learn more about that just go ahead and check that one out so how to escort and how to escort well and the answer to that is that there's no right answer <laughs> but if i have to give you one i would say that the good escort ship is the one that gives the fleet that very thing that it lacks at a certain point and by giving that certain thing to the fleet the fleet can fulfill its duty and achieve the mission objective so if you are escorting there is one basic thing that you should be able to do always and it is always stay in coherence inside of the fleet to be able to react effectively to any changes in the situation in order to achieve coherence with your squad you need two things one is position you should be always at the right distance and positioned in a way that you don't that you can move freely around the fleet and your squad members as well without you know getting in the way of each other to do this uh, good advice should be always try to keep yourself behind the main guy of the fleet of the squad at a distance enough for you to react to any changes in his course or in speed also another good thing to do is never overtake putting yourself in between the fleet and the enemy always overtake behind the fleet and the enemy unless you want to you know provide cover with the smoke or try and start putting yourself as a threat to the enemy so you can start tanking the damage only project yourself outside of the fleet outside of the coins of the fleet to cap only and to <coughs> reload <coughs> um, um, some ammunition <coughs> sorry um then if you should only lead the fleet if you are actively scouting for the fleet or if you are piloting your bigger uh, fleet members inside a zone where there's a high chance for an ambush like you know when you are getting inside of the island part of the map where you know this the pt boat spawn is close and there might be you know dds around and the second thing to do to keep the coherence with the fleet is to always be one step ahead of what's going on you can achieve that by having a good situational awareness you know always keep an eye on the map try and not to tunnel vision if you are shooting every now and then if you're shooting every now and then just zoom out check your surroundings check your teammates do not collide with them those those things yeah also try and keep track of the cap points and how are they going to be 
in a few minutes in advance so maybe if the fleet if the enemy fleet is charging one flank maybe they would get the cap point on that side that means that maybe you and your fleet need to move to another direction if that's the case to react and try and cap another point and so on one thing to mention here is that because of the lack of a scout plane the Nuremberg is more of firing kind of combat support that adds its uh, anti-air to the fleet and adds damage to the fleet rather than a, a scouting one so once you have done these two things and you improve on them and you completely interiorize what is the coherence of the fleet you will find a few things along the way and one is that there are more things to do apart from only this basic staying coherence and that is part of the beauty of the escort ship part of trying to build a fleet and play as one that there's not going to be two situations that are going to be exactly identical and that you're going to be needing different things from different ships at different times but also that you can let's say upscale this concept not so much downscaling it because you shouldn't be escorting with a destroyer to a cruiser because of the lack of armor on the destroyers they're not gonna do they don't do well the scorting thing they can do it they can provide cover at certain points but it's something that with a destroyer this is it's not gonna end well for you but you can certainly you can upscale it and with this i mean that for example a heavy cruiser or a pocket battleship can escort a bigger target a battle cruiser or a battleship is kind of similar with the with the destroyer but not because that they don't have armor it's because of the sheer amount of penetration that you are going to find on the other side of the team because you're going to be in front of other bbs and other bcs and they are just going to melt you if you have you know a heavy cruiser or a pocket battleship let's say so Let's say that the sweet spot of this concept of uh, escorting, of being a support player, is around these BRs from 5.0 to, let's say, up to 6.0. And the last couple of things before we wrap this video up are uh, that to do the escort role effectively, you need team play. And that is something that is very lacking in regular naval. A random queue battles so do not just throw it away the window because you cannot find team play in the regular battles just try and find a squad and if you don't have one just join navy for the mate and the last thing is that sometimes you're gonna find yourself in a situation where people are gonna tell you oh you can't escort me and then they just go to a corner of a map and they start sniping from like you know 20 kilometers away 15 kilometers away or they say well i need a escort and they just do flanking maneuvers you know they just go all around the map just to put themselves in a way where they can just provide the fire support that they are not affecting directly the game and they want you to support them in doing so well those kind of plays don't need a dedicated support they can do that on their own and you're gonna find yourself that you're gonna be doing better if you try and support people that gets in the harm's way that try and go for the objectives they try and go for the cap zones especially because of your lack of ammo as well so you need to you can't not project yourself too far away from the cap zones because that those are the zones where you can reload <laughs> as simple as that i could go on forever with this subject i really think that you guys can tell that i like doing the escort roll thing but uh, anyway i think the the main points are very clear and well settled by now so i'm just gonna wrap it up here and as always thank you all for watching please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already give us a like please and i'll see you on the next one Ta-da!